Right, just before we start, I have a few more sticker swaps. I have one here from Hughes Woodwork, and I have one from Huey Lyons Heart, and I have one from my good mate, Mr. Mike Walt. Uh, probably one of the best tutors on YouTube. Right, I will of course put a link to the lads uh, channels in the description below. Now let's get on with this video. Right, today's video is I'm gonna stick with the Christmas theme I think. Um, so that people have time to try these before Christmas if they want to. Uh, we're gonna do an angel Christmas angel with torn wings. It's uh, it's one I haven't seen done before. I've seen one where the wings kind of swoop out towards the back, but this one the wings kind of go round the angel a little bit. Uh, in the lathe, I have what I think is a piece of tiger wood. I'm not 100% sure. It's one of the acacias. I'm just not 100% sure which one. So, first thing we're going to do is round it off, and I'll be using a ball gouge because, as seems to be the usual, it's the wrong way round. So, mask on. What I'm going to do is section this out, right? Sir, right now, angel head is smallish, so leave enough for the cut off. Go there. Right. Angel body, go there. And we leave down here for a skirt. We will use a bowl gouge for this, because it really isn't happy with that. Now I start shaping a head. in there. egg shape. And quite small as well.
find all these shapes as I go. So now we take this down a bit. A definite vibration in this wood. If I wanted to do a perfect spoiler, I couldn't get one. I'm getting a definite vibration in this wood for some reason. Take it up and see if that helps. that scared a little bit before I finish the bottom of that body. Now unlike the wood witch I don't want a straight skirt I want it to be wider at the bottom and kind of scoop in a little bit. Kind of looks like a bell. Kind of 
something like that. Looks funny because that body is wrong. Slightly longer. Little bell gouge. The smaller bell gouge, a bit, bit more control on it. the bell shape I was looking for. There's a bump there though. Yeah that's better. Right, we blend that body in again. Yeah, that's better. Right, let's look at this. Right, give that a sanding. See how it looks. And we'll be back after the sanding. And we're back. Uh, you might notice that it's now in a choke, which I should have done at the start. But my brain had decided it was having a, one of those I'm not going to work today moments. But uh, I spotted it when I was sanding, so I just went, oh, I better put that in a choke. Right. Now that that's polished, right, it's had its the standard finish of sanding to 240, cleaned it with mats. Sanding sailor, Yorkshire grit, and Hampshire sheen eyeglass. Right, now we'll do the top of the head, which is why I needed it in the chuck. I really was not having a good morning. Right. Now, remember, when you're doing this, a lot of leverage there. So you do this with small cuts. Now I'll sand that and polish that as well. Now that that's all finished and nice and shiny and lovely, I'm going to drill a big hole in it. Right, now, there's some nice chitines there. So I want to drill a hole there. On the opposite side of it. Right. I'm looking for slightly above halfway on this so that the wings will sit properly. Right, and try and get this hole straight. Now it doesn't have to be all that deep. Okay. But it does have to be flat. Right, okay, and there's the first part of the angel. I just have to part it off now. Right. 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 
bottom of the skirt. Right, don't forget to undercut. We just have to sand that off. Right, but there is basically the first part of the angel. Okay, stick her up there for the moment. Now, the next part is going to be the wings. Right. And I have some prep to do for it, so I'll be back in a second. Okay, wings. Uh, what I have on is another piece of, I think it's a different type of acacia. <coughs> I said, I got a load of this stuff in and I forgot to mark what it was. And I've forgotten what it is. Um, this one is eight inches across by inch and three quarter that way. Uh, what you're basically going to do is turn what I suppose you could class as a winged bowl. But you got to turn it in a, special, in a specific kind of way. Right, so the first thing you want to do is you want to mark a mortise on one side. Right, it's held on a faceplate. Right, so you want to mark a mortise on one side, the smallest you can get. Put in a mortise. I said the smallest one you can get. Put in the angle for the mortise. Now, if you're using one of these, watch it because that at the moment is way too low because I was using the parting tool. Right, it's something that new turners do. They use one tool and they don't readjust the rest. Now, if you look at that, right, there's the two of them even. Right, you can see the difference in the cutting height there. When you change your tool, take the time to check your tool rest is at the right height. Right, so kill it. Because it can get very frustrating if your tool is not at the right height. Yep, that's cutting on even now. That's cutting on center line now. What I want to do is... Put in the angle. And make sure it's square. Right. Now, an important thing here is mark the center, right? You need to know exactly where that center is. So mark the center. Right? Now, take it off the lid. Right. Now, you're going to need to take this off, but you need it to go back in the same spot. So, a simple trick is, if you put a mark on your faceplate and a mark on your blank, line the two of those up again, and it's going to go back in the same spot. Now what you want to do is flip it over, right? You have your center point, which is right there, right? Now pick your grain direction. Um, 
for aesthetics basically right now my grain seems to be running kind of that way right so what i want to do is i want to draw a line directly through the center of that Okay, so that's my center line, right? Then, what I want to do is I want to get marks for either side. Pick a number, right? I'm going to go for two centimeters. Now, what I'm looking for is I want two centimeters from there to there. So the two centimeters touches there. Two centimeters touches that side. Is that enough? No, it's not. So we go three. Right, I want three centimeters out of side. Three centimeters on that part of the curve. Three centimeters on that part of the curve. And draw a line. Right. What you're actually looking for is that intersection point there are the ones you're looking for. And you want four of them. So you do the same on the other side. So I have four marks there, there, there and there. Now the next thing you want is a fastener bit. Right. Now I'm not going to give you specific sizes on stuff. Because this all boils down to your eye. What you like. Right. But what I'm going to do is, the point of the fastener bit is going to go directly on that center line, right? And I want the fastener bit to drill as close as I can get it to the mortise I put in, but I still want to leave somewhat of a wall there. Right? So push it down, right? That's on the center line. Same on that side, leaving about the same gap. Right? Check it, yeah, it's on. Right. Push it down, give myself a mark. Now what I want to do is I want to drill straight through the entire blank at those two points with this fastener bit. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, right. and you end up with two holes. Right. I actually went a bit close on that, but it should be fine. Then what you want to do is the edge of this here, right, you want to join with those points there, with some form of a curve. Right? Basically, this, you can just eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Right? But what you're trying to do is continue, kind of continue that curve, just in a different curve. Right? So just eyeball it. And give yourself a curve mark. It doesn't have to be a huge curve. Just once it's not a straight line. Because straight lines don't exactly look the best on this. Now, go over to whatever style you have and cut those out. Cut out that section there and that section there. Right? And you'll end up with that. Right? Now you want to remount this on your faceplate. Just find your mark, line it up. Now this time you'll you might only be able to get four screws in it, but 
this blanket's so small it doesn't really matter and all you got to do is line your holes up again four screws is plenty to hold this blank this size Just gonna make really sure that these go back into these screws go back into the same holes. Or this is gonna end up weird. Right. Now back onto the lead with it. Yeah, that didn't work too. That didn't go too bad, I think. Now, what you want to do is turn the outside of your bowl. Right, and what you're looking for is a shallow bowl coming from the middle out. You don't want any straightness here. You want it literally coming like that out. Now, as with a winged bowl, speed is your friend here. Now, finish this part. Um, now, right, you don't worry about there, you'll start out there later. We'll finish this part now, right? Um, when we're holding it, when we switch it again, you're not going to be holding this by much because all you're going to be doing is putting a divot in there, you're just going to be getting rid of that mortise, right? So, it's held good and solid now, so finish as much of it as you can. Right, once you have your finish done on that, you need to take it off and flip it around. Now it's flipped around. The thing to remember here is you're not hollowing it like a bowl. Right? What you need to do is you need to leave yourself a spigot in the middle. Right? Uh, to fit the hole that you put here, right? So the simplest way of doing it is cut in with a parting tool bigger than this hole. And then when you get it down to the depth you need, you can change the size of it to fit the hole. Right, so go bigger than you need. Right, and then simply hollow it, what, uh, hollow it carefully, because remember, you, what you have here is a winged bowl, basically. Now, see, I'm too high, what I was saying earlier. So maybe go down a little bit. You see the spigot there, and I'm just going to start hollowing out, but I'm going to hollow out very carefully and at speed. Now you want to start reducing this, right? Um, because at the moment that is way too big. And we get an explosion. We got a catch.
That's a pity because they were turning out quite nice. All right, there's always a danger of a catch, and I just got one. Right. You can see where I caught just there, right. and it popped. It can happen to anybody. If it does, don't worry about it. It happens to everyone. Right. What I'm going to do is I'll get a spike nail to this stage again and I'll continue on. Right, because that one is now firewood. It happens. Right, and there we are, back to where we were. Now your next thing is to make this fit, this hole. Right, so try it. Right. Too big, which we knew it would be. So just take, twitch off of it. And try it again. Still too big. Now it's actually worked down it this way because as the old saying goes, you can take wood off, but you can't put it on. Now, you take this off. Well, no, actually you don't. Now you finish the inside of it. Right. So, sand finish. You know the idea. You know the drill. Okay, and there we are, finished. Right. Now, take it off the joke. And you're gonna flip it around so you can finish the other side. Right, I have this held by that little spigot in the pen jaws and I have the tail stock up. And now what I want to do is I want to turn this down into that cone that you left inside. Right. Now it's highly possible here that you could become a member of the reverse funnel club. So you do have to be careful. Right. Check how you're doing. Right. You don't want sharp lines. See that sharp ridge there? You don't want that, you want it to curve. Now, when you get to this stage, you want to sort out in here, right? You want those rounded. <coughs> and the only way I've actually figured out to do it is the good old 80 grit skew. So basically lock off and hand sand all in here. Now that bit's finished, we just got to take the centre part out. Right. Right. Try and get as much of it away as I can while I still have tail stocks apart. That's too heavy. Now, take the tail stack away. See if we can get rid of the nub in the middle. Right. 
nice and gently very gentle cuts Now, sand and finish the middle, and we're back. Okay, it's had its normal finish. Uh, Sammy 240, cleaned with nets, sand and sailor, Yorkshire grit, and have to shame how glass. I'm just buffing it off now. And there's a tip if you're using something with a gap in it and you're using you want to buff it off or use yorkshire grit or something and it has a gap don't try and just use your fingers just get a little pad and put it behind the piece of paper towel and just very lightly rub it and you'll get the effect you're looking for okay. and there's the back of the wings Now, you can't have an angel without a halo, so that's what's next. So I'll set up to do the halo, and I'll be back. Okay, here we go for the halo. I have a small piece of acacia in the truck. Uh, I'm just basically going to round it off first. Right. Well, it's actually between centres. I'm going to make it so it goes in the truck, but first thing I'm going to do is round it off. Now, just set it up for the chuck. Right. Let's take the chuck on. And then turn the halo. Okay, right. So the piece in the chuck. We're just going to turn a very simple halo. Right. Right. Face off the front. Decide round about what size I want the halo. So I'll grab the head, and that's not too bad. Right, maybe a slight little bit off. Right, slight bit smaller, I think. Not much, don't. what width I want the halo which is not too heavy but not too light either put in with a parking tool right. then what I want to do is kind of divot the top a little bit to give it some like three dimensional appeal. I'm slightly high. Right. Right. 
Right, that'll do. Now I'm just going to give it a quick sand and finish. Right, there's the halo parted off. I have a little nub there, so I'm just going to sand that off. Now, I also need to sand the back of the angel's head. What I need to do is sand a flat there in it. Very carefully line it up. There's a flat sanded, and that's where the halo will go. Like that. Now, I need to repolish the bottom of that halo because it's at the marking up when I was sanding, and it will be very, very obvious on the uh, on the angel. So there's no point in cutting a corner. There's absolutely no point in cutting corners. I'll do something to do it right. And there it is. Uh, sorry, the battery went in the camera. Uh, the only thing I did was glue everything together. Right, so there we have an angel with torn wings. And, and having a look at the wood, it's not tiger, it's straight acacia. The whole angel is straight acacia. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, here's a quick look at the back. See the, the way the back dips in like that? That's where you leave that cone in there. Right? So, I hope you enjoyed that one. And I'll see you in the next one.